everyone. So this is a walkthrough for your IP2 assignment in Psych 315. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through that IP2 assignment. We're going to go through it step by step, and I'm going to show you along the way with, with pictures and things directly from your assignments so you can see exactly what it is you will need to submit for this IP2 assignment. So first, let's take a look at the assignment itself. You will notice in the very beginning, it provides a sentence stating, use this template to complete the assignment. The words this template are a hyperlink. When you click on that, it will allow you to download the template that you will be using for this assignment. So when you download that template, the first thing you will see is your cover page you must submit this cover page to follow proper APA formatting. On this cover page, you will be changing these three things that you see highlighted in green. You're going to remove the information that is there and enter in your own information. So these are the only things that you're going to be changing. You will not be changing anything else on this cover page. It needs to stay as a cover page, so don't move the text up so that it fits on one page. This is a cover page, which is a part of proper APA formatting. Next, as you scroll down to page two, you will see the body of your assignment. This is what that body of your assignment looks like. Now we are going to break that down those directions one at a time, and I'm gonna show you how that all fits into that table that you're seeing at the bottom of the page. So in the first direction, you see that it is telling you you're going to use the table below to complete the assignment. So that table we just saw, that is where you're going to be entering in your information. And again, we're going to walk through it all step by step. The next thing you're going to notice is that it asks for you to choose two to three parts of the brain from the following list. In this list, you have the hippocampus, the prefrontal cortex, the amygdala, the pons, the temporal lobe, the frontal lobe, the corpus callosum, and the cerebral cortex. These are the choices that you have for this assignment. You're going to be selecting two to three parts of the brain from this list. Next in your assignment prompt, you will see that it states that in column one, you're going to identify two to three parts of the brain. Now, this is from that list that you had earlier in the prompt, and these parts will go in that first column of the table. So here's your table, here is column one. So in this first column, this is where you're going to be entering in those two to three parts of the brain. Each one is going to be in its own row. So you're going to identify a part here, a part here, and if you choose to do a third, third part will go here. And just as it says, you only need to click or tap in order to enter the text. So you're going to be using this list and you're going to be choosing the two to three parts and then they will go into this part of your chart. This is an example of what it will look like once you've enter, entered in those two to three areas of the brain into column one. All you're doing is entering in their names. That's it, that's all you have to do is put their names in there, identify them. And in this case, I picked hippocampus, amygdala, and pons. That's all you have to do to complete that first piece of your assignment. Just enter in three parts from that list of the, of the brain parts that you were given, enter them into your first column. Next, we're going to move to column two. And in column two, we are going to explain what the two to three parts of the brain are responsible for and we will be writing three to four sentences for each of these parts. So in other words, you are going to uh, use the second column to discuss what each of these parts of the brain is responsible for. You need to write three to four sentences for each of these parts of the brain. Also, if you looked at your rubric, you will know that this needs to have some detail or a connection to perception, attention, learning, and or memory. So make sure you include some information about that in your description of what these parts of the brain do. So, okay, so here is your second column. 
This is where you're going to be entering three to four sentences discussing what each of these areas is responsible for. So here I would write three to four sentences about what the hippocampus is responsible for. Here I would write three to four sentences about what the amygdala is responsible for. And here I would have three to four sentences about what the pons is responsible for. Now, because I've had some people question this, I want to make sure that I clarify. This should be about the part of the brain that's in the same row as the information that you're giving. So as I said, if hippocampus is in the first row, this should be about the hippocampus and so on. I've tried using some color coding here in hopes this will help kind of give you a visual about where you're going to enter in that information. And again, you just need two, to you just need three to four sentences for each of these two to three parts of the brain that you've selected. Now we're on to the third column, our third and final column. In this column, you're going to be looking at the practical applications in organizational behavior. This is partly the, why do I need to know this for my future career in organization behavior? Um, you're going to be using this third column to write three to four sentences about why each of the parts of the brain that you identified in column one are important to understand in organizational behavior. Why are we studying them? Why are we learning them? Why do we need to know them? Why are they important to our career and organizational behavior? Why are they going to be important within our organization? So here's a look at the third row. Notice I did that same color coding. So in this third column, you are going to be going in here and you're going to be entering in your information from your first row. You'll do the same thing here for your second and for your third. So you're going to make sure that your rows all relate to the, the area of the brain identified in your first column. And you're going to make sure that it, everything matches up with their appropriate, they're all in their appropriate rows as you go through this assignment. So once you've done that, your table is complete. Here's an example of what it would look like having that first row completed. Now, I intentionally chose a part of the brain that is not listed in your assignment because I want to make sure that you can still use any of those parts of the brain that are listed for your assignment. So I chose one that was not listed in there. Now, notice in here, I have three to four sentences. I also gave some information about sensation. So I've managed to get through some of that sensation and perception information. And I've discussed why it's important in organization behavior. And notice it's specific. It doesn't just say, you know, well, because it was in charge of somebody's sense of smell, so it's important. Why specifically is it something that would be important in organizational behavior? So make sure that you are being specific on this as well and you're directly connecting to organizational behavior and not just to human life in general. So make sure you have that specific organizational behavior connection. Now, if you chose to use resources, you must provide proper citation for those resources. In the unit one uh, live chat, I went through how to correctly quote and cite information. There is also an announcement about that available to you in the course. Please be sure that you are using those resources to help you complete your citations correctly. What I wanna take a second to show you is a properly formatted reference page. You're going to use a new page because reference pages are on their own page, just like your cover page has its own page. That's where you're going to add your references. So just to give you a quick little example of how that will look, I added in IntelliPath as a citation. And if you go into that welcome announcement, I've actually shown you exactly how to cite IntelliPath. So you can go in and get that from that welcome announcement. One last quick reminder on citations. Remember that you must use the exact web page that you've used and not just the website. So for example, if I go to this web page to get information, if I want to write about the cerebral cortex and I went to this specific page to get information, I need to use this full web page as my reference. This is exactly where I got my information from. I got it from verywellmind.com slash the anatomy of the brain two seven nine four eight nine five i need to have that exact information in there as to what web page i used 
the purpose of a reference list is that someone can go to the exact place where you got the information and then they can get the exact same information. Now, if I were to only use the first part and say verywellmind.com, a person would get to this page. This is very different from the page where I got my information. This is not the page where I got the information that I used for the assignment. Therefore, it is not a valid reference. So make sure that you are using the exact web page where you've got information. Now, for support on quotation and citation and creating APA references and more, please take a look at the, at the paraphrasing, citation, and plagiarism reminders announcement posted in your course. In it, you will notice that down toward the bottom, there is a whole section and it says for support with writing references in APA format, please view this page in the Writing Center. And there is a hyperlink. You can follow this link to get support for your references. It will walk you through the steps on how to create your references. So please be sure that you take advantage of this to get some support if you need it. So don't forget, this assignment is due by 11.59 p.m. Central Time on Sunday of Unit 2. And I hope you found this walkthrough helpful. And please let me know if you have any additional questions. Thanks for watching.